Hi, I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and I am so grateful that you've taken time out of your busy day to spend some here with us. Today, we are welcoming Jonathan McKenzie to the podcast. Now, here is why this is important. Jonathan has joined Apply Yourself, the Advancement Spot, as our COO, our Chief Operating Officer, and we are going to learn all about him today. I think probably your first question is, if you know anything about us, you know that we have a very specific mission statement, a very specific value statement, and we have very important values and goals that we strive to achieve here at Apply Yourself. And for that purpose, I don't bring just anybody on. The people that I bring on have to understand our mission, our values, our goals, and really have to embody those goals as well. So Jonathan and I go way back. We go way back. We're married, (laughs) full disclosure. And so he really understands where Apply Yourself has come from. He understands how Apply Yourself has grown and he is in it to win it for continuing to grow the impact of Apply Yourself and grow this amazing community together with us. Actually, and, and just as part of the intro here, Jonathan was also around when I started Apply Yourself. So Jonathan and I met in 2012 and I started Apply Yourself in 2015, back when I was still doing house calls. So he's really been there since the beginning. So if anyone, if there would be anybody out there that gets it, it's him. And so I'm so excited that he's here today. Now, before we move on to hear from Jonathan, I want to give a bit of a background on him so that you can get to know him a little bit. and and feel free to reach out to either of us moving forward. So Jonathan has also joined our law firm. We're now partners at our law firm called Schneer McKenzie Law and Policy Consulting. Jonathan is a lawyer. He was called to the Ontario Bar in 2011, and his practice focuses on corporate and commercial matters, including franchise law and labor and employment law. We are both notary publics here practicing at Sphere McKenzie. Jonathan has a decade of litigation experience in Toronto, most recently from 2019 to 2022. Jonathan worked as corporate legal counsel at the largest Canadian-owned real estate franchisor. And we are very lucky to have him here. His journey here has been winding, albeit a little bit later, a little bit later than we may be used to hearing, for example, from me, where my path was winding from the start. Jonathan's actually began winding more in his professional career, and we're going to learn more about that. But I'm going to stop talking now. Welcome, Jonathan. Thank you. I'm glad to be on the podcast. Yeah. And (laughs) working down the hall. That's right. (laughs) So I know you. But a lot of our listeners don't. And this is a surprise to many of us. This is your official introduction and your official launch. And so why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got here? We're going to really dive into your academics and and how you sort of navigated those waters in a few minutes. But why don't you just give us like a broad overview? To go back to my to my undergrad days, I studied political science. My first year, I was at Huron University College, which is part of Western University. And then after my first year, I transferred to York. I completed my political science degree in three years. And at the end of my third year, I got into Osgoode Hall Law School. Went to Osgoode from 2007 to 2010. And then I graduated in 2010. And then I articled from 2010 to 2011 at an insurance litigation firm in Etobicoke, which is part of Toronto. And that experience as an articling student involved a lot of court attendances, a lot of litigation. And it was a very different experience that I had in law school. Was, in fact, it was completely different. And I, I don't think law school actually really prepares anyone for, for the world of litigation. When I was called to the bar in 2011, I started off at my articling firm for about a year. 
And then I transitioned to another firm. I did plaintiff side personal injury from about 2012 to 2019. That's pretty much exclusively what I was doing. Plaintiff personal injury litigation. It was a demanding but rewarding job where, you know, you represent a lot of people who are in the worst accidents of their life, who've suffered traumas, who come from all over the world, some of whom can't communicate properly and they've had their lives upended and they've come to you for help to deal with, you know, large institutional insurers on the other side. And many cases are very amicable and some cases are very adversarial and you meet all sorts of personalities, deal with all sorts of situations and you constantly have to think. You have to write, you have to advocate, you have to learn how to multitask and how to get things done. Because in the litigation world, not getting something done is simply not an option for clients, for you, for the firm. Things have to get done. By the end of, say, 2018, early 2019, you know, it became clear to me I didn't want to spend the rest of my life doing litigation work for a number of reasons. First of all, it's it's very demanding. It's very hard to leave the work at the office and just come home because, you know, when you're handling literally hundreds of files simultaneously, it's it's very hard to turn off the work switch and... A lot of the work, the, the fact of the matter is a lot of the work is very adversarial. I mean, you are in uh, personal injury work, you know, it, it can involve a lot of, a lot of conflict with the other side, with the insurance company, with, with other lawyers, it, you know, you get along well with most people, but at, at the end of the day, there's still a lot of conflict. And sometimes, you know, it just, it's, it, it kind of starts to take over your life a little more than you want, especially if something's heading towards a trial or if there's a big mediation coming up, or if you're just fighting over documentary production. Sometimes things can get a little bit heated. And quite frankly, I didn't want to spend the rest of my life doing that. I got enough of litigation to know exactly what it is, what it isn't. And I knew that I wanted I wanted to change my career path at that point. At that point, I was in my early 30s. And what I did was I enrolled in the real estate course through the Ontario Real Estate Association. That was a real estate salesperson course. I thought that it was a good opportunity for me to leverage some of my legal knowledge in another, potentially another field, but to at least get another certification, another designation, another certificate. So I took the real estate course through the Ontario Real Estate College, which is now, as far as I understand, it's closed and has been replaced by the program at Humber College, which is a brand new program. So I took my real estate license, of course, it's for my real estate license in the, in the course of interviewing for or looking for a brokerage where I could potentially work as a real estate salesperson. The fact is, I didn't know really what I wanted to do with it. I was kind of just speaking to brokerages while also working at a law firm and just kind of seeing what was out there. I happened to meet someone who runs one of the largest well-known Canadian real estate franchisors, which led to a job where I worked at corporate legal, as corporate legal counsel for that company for two and a half years through the pandemic. So it was a complete shift from my litigation role for the first seven or eight years of my career. But my litigation experience certainly helped me transition into my role as now an in-house lawyer at the time doing everything from franchising to labor and employment to some intellectual property and, and everything in between. So it really taught me that the point is my litigation experience taught me how to manage my day, manage my time, how to advocate and how to write properly and how to assess situations in a timely manner, looking at the evidence, looking at the facts, and then being able to provide legal advice that was, you know, in my opinion, the, the, you know, the most prudent way forward in any given situation. And then more recently, I obviously I've joined Apply Yourself as, as COO, you know, because I strongly believe in the mission of Apply Yourself. I believe that, you know, there really isn't the resources that the player self provides to students and the way that player self works with students simply, it wasn't available when I was a student. I, I can tell you that, uh, I, you know, the, the courses and the supports that are available, available through apply yourself would have been enormously helpful for me as an undergrad student looking to apply to graduate schools. Cause when I was applying to law schools, you know, I, pretty much the only thing I was ever, I knew was that you had to write the LSAT. You had to write the LSAT and there was this kind of this other part of the application process where you just like, you write a paragraph about yourself and you answer a few questions. You speak to a couple of professors who, who sort of know you and then they write a reference letter. You hope it's good enough. And, you know, I had enough relationships with my professors and employers. I was able to get reference letters. But as far as personal statements, CV, statements of intent, I mean, I didn't really know the first thing about it other than I had to fill in forms on the OLSAS, the Ontario Law School Application Service website, and they had to be due do by a certain date. But I think that, you know, the way that Apply Yourself approaches graduate and professional school applications, which is in a non-competitive, supportive way, 
you know, both with Adrian and with other students really is something that I think that a lot of university students would benefit from because it allows, it allows students to reflect on what they really want to do with their life, to really dig into their experiences and to even, to even think about the, the options going forward out of undergrad. You may have thought that you want to be one thing, but then you may have a warped perception of what that actually is moving forward. It helps you to, to, to ground you in what you really want to do moving forward and to, to really give a lot of thought as to what your ne- next steps are. And then the best steps to try and reach that goal, regardless of what you're trying to do, be it a master's degree, medical school, nursing, MBA, law, medicine, anything in between. So I'm excited to bring my years of experience in, in law and, you know, and all the other experiences I've had in life to apply yourself and to work with students and clients moving forward. Awesome. Yeah. So thank you for providing that really great introduction, but I'm not letting you off the hook that easy. There's more. (laughs) There's more that I want to talk about. Firstly, I think that it's really important that to to really shine a light on the fact that, you know, you talked really smoothly about, you know, your transition from law to real estate and how it just sort of like happened serendipitously. But it really wasn't that easy. And here on this podcast, you know, because you've listened, is that we really focus on the the hard times because that's what people don't talk about. And so when you were going through that transition, when you were deciding, I think we were at the time in an airport, maybe coming home from New York. Yep, that's right. We were. <laughs> but we were talking about this for like probably the thousandth time, right? Like it's not like it was one conversation and yeah. then like it just happened. It was a lot of hard work. So maybe you can talk about that period and Talk about what it was like for you to actually decide, okay, I'm going to leave a stable job. Potentially, I'm going to switch field. You studied for your real estate license while you were working full time. And that was incredibly intense for you. And to write those exams and to then have your real estate license in what was it, under a year. And then all of a sudden to shift to thinking, okay, maybe I want to be a a real estate agent. Then to meeting the CEO of, of your then company and them saying, well, actually, we're looking for counsel. Like, so talk me through how you felt during that whole experience. Maybe you could even talk about some of the conversations that we had if you want to, because it's just it's it's not that easy and it wasn't that easy. Right. No, it, it certainly wasn't easy because, you know, you can easily get into a comfort zone and settle in a way. I easily could be working in personal injury right now. As a matter of fact, and, and Adrian, I've spoken to this before, and I've received unsolicited job offers from, from personal injury firms. They just find me on LinkedIn. They like say, an amazing offer. Here's the job. <laughs> yeah. Here's the job. You're a perfect fit. And, and the fact is, I, I, I'm not interested in the field anymore. It's simply not what I want to do. And I've explained it very politely to people. And it took a lot of reflection to get to that point. Yeah. And to get to the point where you're confident in your choice so that you can turn down these insane offers that you yeah. were receiving. Yeah. Like you needed to be really comfortable with your decision in order to be able to just have your gut reaction. Nope, not taking this, turning it down. And then you did turn it down and yeah. you kept going with what felt al- aligned with you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you do something for years on end and if you're not really comfortable with what you're doing entirely, like you can do it, but at the end of the day, it's becoming like, kind of like a drag on your day-to-day life where you're constantly stressed all the time about something, no matter what you do, no matter how much you stay on top of stuff, it, you're always stressed. They, you, you know, I started to have, we started to have conversations about, is this worth it? Is this worth it in, in, in the year 2050? Is this what I want to be doing? 2045, 2060? Probably not. And if I'm looking back then when I'm 60, 70, 80 years old, am I going to say, well, in my 30s, I shouldn't change something? And I, you know, and I often said to myself, yes, I should change something and now I should change something. So, you know, it it took a lot of hard conversations and I worked at different firms. It wasn't a matter of like you switch a firm and everything's magically better at the other place. It's the same, at the end of the day, it's the same job if you're in a field, regardless of what the field is. It's the same job at different companies. Sure, companies have different cultures, but at the end of the day, the tasks are more or less the same. You have to actually like what you're doing. I mean, I worked at firms that had the most advanced software. I had firms that were I worked at firms that were more old school as the way they did things as far as the you know software and style and, and managing files and 
I worked in different parts of the city. I worked for people of different vintages, people called to the bar in you know in the 1970s and people you know, cult of the bar, you know, closer in age to me, but it didn't seem to make a difference. At the end of the day, it's the same subject matter. So, you know, we were sitting in it after a long, <laughs> actually, I think it was, it was a long discussion. We we're sitting in the airport in New York. And actually, I think that weekend we had seen a, a couple of friends of ours who live in New York and they had actually talked to us about their career paths. And I think we were reflecting what they had told us about their career paths as lawyers. And then you know, we decided to look up, you know, how would I get my real estate license? It seems like a logical extension of my legal background. I've already taken courses in real estate law. It was a long time ago, but like, I'm sure I can pick this stuff up pretty quickly. And then lo and behold, I did. And, you know, I, I filled out the paperwork. I, they let me into the real estate course. And then it, I had to really, really dig deep into my energy and time to just find time to finish these courses. Cause you, there was also a very limited time frame to get it done. The college was closing. You had to get it done by a certain period of time. I only had so much free time. So basically it meant the weekends. I would, And then you had to sign up to write exams on weekends. So you had to clear out weeks and weeks and weeks of weekends over eight to nine months. And you had to be prepared when you showed up to the exams. Like there wasn't an option to not be prepared because then if you missed the deadline, then you couldn't finish the course. So then it made the whole, what would, what would be the point of taking the, the real estate course? So the point is, you know, Taking the real estate course in and of itself was the product of, of a lot, a lot of discussion over many years. And, and you know what? Like I had some very frank discussions with people in the personal injury world while I was in the personal injury world. I, I had a very senior mediator once tell me like at the end of a mediation and the mediation was fine. It wasn't like the mediation was something that happened. He just, he was talking to me about his life because he was having health problems at the time. He actually told me, and this really sticks to me. He says, he said, you know what? This litigation work has taken years off of my life. He says, and honestly, at your age, if you could do something that's related to law, that's not litigation, I'd highly recommend you do it. I was completely stunned by his comment. Mm -hmm. Totally stunned that he was that open and frank with me because he didn't know me that well. I met him a couple of times. I think he was just reflecting on some recent, recent surgery he'd had. He was probably in his early 60s at that time, but he'd been around for a long time. So he told me like, take a deep, deep look at your career. And I hadn't even brought it up. He brought it up to me. And then sadly, about two or three months after that mediation, I found out he had passed away of, I believe it was a heart attack. We were sent the obituary. And I think that moment really stuck with me because I realized, look, people are like, if you're in a job that is so stressful that it is literally causing you health problems, is this really worth it? I'm like, is there a reason this guy had the conversation with me after the mediation in the lobby of this hotel? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. You started, I started to see some other lawyers who, not that I worked with, but I became aware that some lawyers develop substance abuse problems. Very sad because, you know, I had noticed, so, I, I honestly had noticed some behavioral issues with some lawyers at certain proceedings I'd been at. And I found out months or even years later, this person had an issue. A couple of them passed away. So I started to notice how, being in a high stress job year in and year out started to affect other people that I was connected with. And I started to really ask questions about, do I really want to continue doing this? And then I decided, no, I want something that's more aligned with my values, more aligned with, with who I am, with, you know, I've always been a strong writer. I've always been interested in the news. I'm very interested in the law. And I think that, you know, transitioning from litigation to my previous roles in house counsel, where I was pretty much doing, so, you know, exclusively solicitor work at the time, that was far more aligned with my values, who I am and what my skill set is than, than litigating hundreds and hundreds of cases with pretty much year in, year out <laughs> with no break. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think one of the important things to pull out of that conversation with the mediator, because we've had a lot of conversations about that conversation. Yeah is that it's not necessarily that, you know, litigation, you know, isn't for everybody or it's so, it is stressful, you know, and I did litigation for a number of years as well. But I think the point is that you have to be content and feel in alignment with your choices. I think that that's really the thing to come out of this is it made you just, it made you think. Yeah, absolutely. Right? It made me think. And I said, you know, it made me think and looking down the road, do I want to be the guy who's talking to someone 30 years younger saying, I should, you should get out of this now. Do I want to be this guy who's like 60 or 70 or 80 years old telling younger people in the profession, you should be in this area? No, certainly. I'm like, well, 
you know, made me think because I thought the same thing myself several times. And many people told me, and I've talked about this before on the podcast, many people have told me, you know, when they found out after my PhD that I was applying to law school, they would tell me like, why are you doing that? Like, I'm a lawyer. Being a lawyer is like, you know, it's the worst decision in the world. And the thing is, is that maybe those people weren't making decisions that were in alignment with themselves, their values, their goals. And so I think that something that we've both sort of come to very differently is that you have to be reflective and aware of what it is that you actually want. Like what, and this is, this is what Apply Yourself is founded upon, is what kind of life do you want? And from there, we construct your path forward. So what kind of life do you want? What do you see for yourself? And for you, you simply wanted a different lifestyle for yourself. I mean, I remember that I was writing my dissertation for my PhD and you were working all night and we were working together and we worked together at night for probably like two or three years straight. That's right. And that's like, we otherwise never would have seen each other. Yeah. Own. So, you know, I think it's really important that, you know, litigation may be for you, litigation may not be for you, but the point is to make decisions that are in alignment, you know, with, with, who you are, what your values are, and what it is that you want for yourself. Similarly, you know, I've talked very publicly and openly about my experience in undergrad and thinking that I wanted to go to medical school. And it turned out that because of certain things that had happened at the time, you can listen to episode two if you're interested in this, that medical school turned out not to be the right decision for me, but it is for so many of our clients, right? It is for so many of our community members, just like applying to law school or master's programs or PhDs or LLMs or to any other graduate program is in alignment with what our community members want to do. And we are all there for that. So can you maybe talk about the importance of the importance of, and we, you've alluded to this, but talk about the importance of a non-competitive environment from your perspective. I think it's crucial because I think you have to be able to reflect and, and, you know, work on your applications in a way that where you're like being true to yourself and you can think for yourself about what you really want to do, remove all that external noise and think clearly rather than thinking about this is, a, you're in a race, you're constantly in a race. I think this is, this is a, it's a very, this whole thing with time and, and you're, you're in a competition. It's, it's a, it's a very constructed thing. Like it's, you know, I remember taking the LSAC. I took the LSAC course with one of the like leading guy uh, LSAC prep companies and it was pretty standard, but like the whole thing was competition. It's like, you need yeah. to get this score and like you'd go home and write endless. I remember writing endless numbers of tests, locking myself in my basement with the windows closed and the door closed for hours on end trying to get the score. Yeah. You spend hours and hours and hours trying to get to some number. And, and no we, one ever talks about taking care of yourself, what your goals are, sleep, st like maintaining healthy habits that are sustainable. And so what ends up happening very early on is people are turning to toxic vices and in order so that they can cope because people don't have the skills. And this is really what we're doing here. This is, you know, I've said many times though, Apply Yourself is truly revolutionizing the student and application experience because it just doesn't have to be that way. The competition, as you said, is completely constructed. And we find so much more success in our community when we support each other and encourage each other and come from a place of abundance rather than scarcity. I mean, our clients, as you know, are getting into Ivy League schools internationally. They're getting into Columbia, McMaster, U of T, I mean, Queens, you name it, NYU, they're getting into these schools. And we don't come from a competition-based narrative. We come very much from an abundance-based perspective and methodology that I have developed over the years and years of, of being a, a university professor and also from my experience on admissions committees. But you, you've seen how that works. Yeah. And I think that, you know, even in, some, in a lot of professional schools, once you're there, the competition continues because uh, that's because that's how it's constructed the curve, this, that. But there are so many ways that 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 just doesn't have to be the way it is. And so we're changing it. That's right. That's right. And, you know, I think that, you know, there's 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 definitely a need for the 
for this in, in the marketplace for the services that apply yourself provides. There's some, the students don't have, I don't think, access to a resource that like apply yourself because most of the other you know, resources that would be available for grad school applications focus on competition and it's this and and numbers, you, yeah. and numbers and you're, you need to like outdo the other person. It's, it's, it's always, it seems to be a lot of the services seem, seem to be in reference to other people who are not you rather than focusing on you. That's right. And there's nothing similarly on what your written materials should look like, right? What is in your personal statement? How should it be structured? How should it be formatted? What should be included in your first paragraph versus your last? Similarly, with your statement of intent and your research statement and or your autobiographical sketch if you're applying to medical school, law school or others. So we really take a holistic approach. And because I've been on admissions committees, I can tell you exactly what works and what doesn't. And it's, it's working for our clients. And so this is not the end. This is not the last time you're going to come on, on the Advancement Spot podcast, but this is your official introduction and your official welcome. So officially welcome to you. And I want to finish this episode with a question that I ask in every episode, which is, what is a piece of advice that you would give your younger self? Piece of advice I give to my younger self is, first of all, never don't give up, even if you're going through like a, a difficult professional time or you're trying to t- transition your career, it's never too late. Like you just have to take the steps. You have to be, you have to help yourself. You have to be resourceful. You have to network. You have to meet people. It's very important because you never know who knows who. You never know what opportunities are out there. And it's never too late to take another course. I took the real estate course what, almost 10 years after graduating from Osgood. Just because you finished professional school doesn't mean you can't take another designation. And in fact, sometimes when you take another designation years after your graduate program or undergrad, you come to it from a very different perspective. With You look at things differently. And it can lead to a whole bunch of other things. Even if, even if you're in a career path that's not entirely aligned with your values, the experience you got from the previous jobs and roles can certainly play a role in the future job that's more aligned with your values. So just keep plugging away. Keep, it's very important to network. Someone once told me when I was looking for jobs as a law student, look, no one's going to find you sitting at home on your couch. You've got to put yourself out there. You've got to introduce yourself. You've got to network. You've got to speak to people. That's the only way they're going to know that you exist. And if you're trying to get into a specific field, then, you know, also don't, don't hesitate to reach out to people in the field. Mm-hmm. I, I did, you know, A lot of lawyers will also say like to, to more junior lawyers, don't hesitate to call a more senior lawyer if you just want to pick their brain about something. Don't feel scared. Like just ask them the questions. A lot of people are very happy to even meet up for coffee. They're happy to, to mentor. They're happy to provide advice in, in certain situations. And I can tell you, like, even as a very, my first year or two of practice, I called people who weren't even at my law firm for advice about things because no one at the firm could answer the question. I reached out to people in my network about certain situations. They are more than happy to help out and they're more happy to give some advice and provide some direction. So Always keep asking questions, always reach out to your network, always, uh, you know, expand your network, meet people and join clubs, associations, do hobbies that are aligned with your interests because you're, you know, life is a constant. Yeah, not process. what you think you should do, things yeah. that are actually aligned with what you're interested in. Yeah, yeah things that are aligned with what you're interested in. And, uh, and, you know, I can tell you that, well, I'll give you a small example for you, for many years. A lot of people know I've been very involved in politics, but one thing led to another. I, I get involved in one little organization here, it led to a meeting with the person there. And before I knew it, I was able, I was actually able to get a meeting with the prime minister of Canada and shake his hand at an event for about a minute or two. Like that was just because of the networking I did. Like it's, you know, you can meet anyone, you can, you can, if you put your mind to something that you want to actually do, I know it sounds cliche, but the fact is like, you don't feel stuck, don't settle and keep, keep moving forward. And each day, you know, each day, like the, the sun, the sun will rise again tomorrow. You need that a bad day. So just make sure that, you know, you're always don't settle in something that you're not happy with. Don't feel stuck forever because you're not. And it, you know, jobs are important, but jobs are just jobs at the same time. You can always try and transition if you're not happy with something, and especially if you're applying to graduate schools, like, look, you, it's okay to explore your options. It's okay to look at more than one program. You don't have to just look at law school or just look at medical school. Maybe consider other options too. 
you may not even know what's out there. So, you know, take a, you know, it's important that we take a holistic approach to professional graduate school applications and also to, to career paths. And remember, you don't have to be stuck or, or settle into one profession for the rest of your life because for, for reasons that, that are not entirely clear to you. So mm -hmm. it's your life, you own it and, you know, make sure that you're always, you're moving forward. And one of the important things here to apply yourself is advancement. So you're always advancing with what you do. And I think that's it. That's right. That's awesome. Don't give up. Don't settle. You've got this. And your future is entirely in your hands. And we are here to support you through any advancement, through any transition that you're going through. And we are more than happy to have a call. You can have a call with either of us. If you want to get in touch with Jonathan, you can just send us a DM on Instagram at Apply Yourself Global. Follow us there and send us a DM. Or you can email Jonathan directly at Jonathan, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N at applyyourselfglobal.com. And by the time this airs, you will have a bio on our website <laughs> and you know where to find me. My uh, Both of our contact information will, will be in the show notes and you can reach me as well on Instagram at Apply Yourself Global directly. So Jonathan, thanks for coming by. <laughs> it's been great to be on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, this isn't this isn't the end. We have a lot more to unpack, but officially welcome. And I know that we are so lucky to have you here. Great. Okay, thank you so much for listening and we'll see you again next time. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at Apply Yourself Global and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.